Hey guys, I wanted to do a video that is explaining the concepts of span and linear independence. And these are like really challenging concepts to visually understand. So the point of this video is not necessarily to give you the uh, information for like doing computational problems with this stuff, but I want to give you a really solid foundation and a visual understanding of what you're doing. So when you are doing the computations that you're learning in the course, it's going to make a whole lot more sense and it's going to be so much easier when you actually understand sort of like what is happening. So let's take a look at what is a span and a span of v1, v2 and v3 in this case. Uh, where v1, v2, and v3 are just some some vectors in uh, n-dimensional space. Um, that means that it is the set or the list of every single possible linear combination of v1, v2, and v3, which basically means, if I were to write this again, c1, v1, plus c2, v2, plus c3 v3 so basically and c1 c2 and c3 are all constants of course the span is every single vector that I can create choosing whatever constants I want for c1 c2 and c3 so let's try to let's try to visualize this uh, with like an easier example uh, let's shrink everything down to just one vector um, in two-dimensional space, and we'll see. And the example that I want to look at is, let's take the span of just a single vector. So what does that mean? Well, we defined up above that the span is the linear combination of all of the vectors in the spanning set. So if we only have one vector, then we're not really adding anything. We're basically just taking a scalar multiple of one of the vectors, but we're taking every single scalar multiple. How many different possibilities can, can we create if we were to multiply A by a scalar? So let's, let's draw a little diagram here. And let's say this is A. I'm just picking a random direction. and. I want to show all of the different ways that I could do C1 times A. So how about C1 is uh, multiplied, or is let's say C1 is 2, so we're scaling A by 2. And I'll do that in green. That would look something like that. I could also scale it by a half, right? I'll do that one in blue. And I'll get something that looks like that. But I could also do it in the other direction. What if I did negative 1? Then my a would look like that. I could do negative half. I could do negative 2. Right? And the point that what I'm trying to get you to see here is that you'll notice that the span, all of the span, it all lies on that line. Right? So if we were to take every single constant that exists right which is like an infinite number they would all have to lie on that line so we can generalize the span in this case and say that that they, they would all lie on this line so this is here this is like how we can visually think of the span of a so let's try uh, a little bit more of a difficult example and let's try let's try taking the span of a but let's add another vector Let's add b. Great. OK. So I'm just going to draw it out like you should. a is the same vector right here. And let's choose b to be a different direction. Let's choose b to be something like that and remember the span in this case the span is every single linear combination of a and b 
which means that in this case, unlike the last one where we didn't have any other vectors to add, this time we are adding A and B, right? So how would this look? Well, we know how to add vectors, right? So A, B would be this, this blue vector here. This is, that's A plus B. So let's think about, let's keep A, let's anchor A at the length that it is. But we can scale B to be whatever we want, right? Which means that B could look like that. If I scale B to be larger, it could go all the way over here. And then I could also scale B in the other direction, right? But they would all be kind of on that line that A, like the t where the tip of A is, right? That the height of A, if we're keeping it at that anchor. But you'll notice that we can reach everywhere on that line. But let's think about not anchoring A now. Let's anchor B. So if we're anchoring B and then we're changing A, then we're basically like changing the height of A or how far it's going to go, right? So what I want you to notice here is that I could make, if I'm doing this, all of my combinations of A and B, I can scale both of them to reach anywhere, right? And think about this, all of these blue vectors that I'm drawing, you could scale A and you could scale B, and you could definitely create any one of those vectors. It just takes the right combination of those constants. And we don't know what they are, but it's not important right now because all we're trying to do is conceptualize what is this span? And what does it look like? So all of these blue vectors, if you think about this, let's, let's try thinking about the every tip of the vector as, as a blue dot, right? If they were both, if A and B were both scaled by zero, we'd be at the origin. And then, like we said, we could reach any point, right, on this in R2. So we're just going to have a bunch of blue dots basically everywhere, right? And if we can reach everywhere, then this entire, <laughs> this entire plane right here, this every single point would be blue, right? So we can think of A and B as spanning all points in R2, right? So one of the important things that I want you to note here is that this only worked because B was in a different direction than A. So let's, let's take a look at what would happen if A and B were not in the same direction. What if B was a scalar multiple of A? So, got something like this. So, if B was a scalar multiple of A, right, C3 times A, then it would, it would look something like this, right? Let's just say it could be like that. Okay. So then A plus B, it would be this arrow right here, this blue arrow. That would be A plus B. So remember, we're still, we're still thinking right now about the span of A and B, which again, it's, it's every single linear combination of A plus B. So if I were to scale A and B, and add them together, what kind of, like, what would my solution space look like? So let's say that I, I take A, make it really small, and I make B really small as well. Then my my vector would look something like, something like that if I added them together. Or I could, what if I took A to be the same, but then I switched the direction and I made B, like, really large? Then my B would look something like that or my A plus B would look something like that, sorry. But the point that I'm trying to get you to see here is that we're still going to be stuck on a line, right? And you might notice it's the same line that we drew up here, right? 
these are the same thing so this is where this theorem comes in saying that the span the span of a is equal to the span of a and b if and only if uh, b is some sort of linear combination of a right cool and this is one of the le this is one of the theorems that is in uh, the lecture notes I think either 13 or 14 but you can see like visually now that because if, if B is a scalar multiple of a then it's gonna have the same span because they're, they're still gonna lie on the same line but if B was not a scalar multiple of a so let's get rid of that then this would, this would not hold true anymore right and we showed that because this is the span the span can reach everywhere but if B is a scalar multiple or a linear combination then you can see that it is the same right and an important term here is that in this case we can reach all of this space because A and B are linearly independent of each other which means that A and B cannot be uh, written as a combination of the other ones right so in this case you can say that B is linearly independent of A. This only this only holds true if B is linearly independent of A. So let's try thinking about like a little bit of a, a higher dimension example, right? So let, let's say that we've got the span of A, B, and C. So similarly, if A, B, and C are all linearly independent of each other, meaning that we can't express them in uh, independent, meaning that we can't express them as a linear combination of the other vectors, then if, if A, B, and C are, let's say that they are all in in R3, then similarly, it will be able to reach all of R3, the spanning set. All of the combinations of these vectors, it will be able to reach every single point in 3D space. So let's try to, let's try to visualize that. So if I had A, let's say this was B, and let's say this was C, then the combination of all of these, which I'll draw in a magenta color, this could be a, a combination. This could be a combination, right? All it could reach every single point in R three space, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm off the screen. It could reach every single space. So, what I want you to notice here, if A and B, let's say only a and b are linearly independent and c was not then we would have two linearly independent vectors and we kind of showed what that might look like which is up here right it can span an entire plane in r2 so if we're visualizing this in 3d then you can kind of think of it as Let's let's get rid of all of these purple vectors. So you could think of it as you could only you would only be able to reach and let's say this this is a combination of the blue and the red ones. You'd only be able to reach a single like sheet of paper in R3, right? That's, so this this would be your span of A, B, and C. And remember, this would be equal to the span of A and B, right? So 
it's definitely a confusing concept, but I wanted to do like an in-depth video just conceptualizing this. And if this is still confusing, feel free to come by to the to the Weef front desk, and either me, Jess, or Amir would be happy to explain this to you guys um, in even more detail. So I, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.